going on guys? Spider-Man Far From Home was directed by John Watts and stars Tom Holland, Samuel Jackson, and Jake Gyllenhaal. In the aftermath of Avengers Endgame, Peter Parker goes on a class trip with his friends only to face new threats in a world that has changed. Starting off with the positives, John Watts' direction was just fantastic. I felt like he found his edge in this one. With Homecoming, he was trying to find his place. Homecoming wasn't a bad film, but I felt like with this one, he really showed his true direction of a filmmaker. He's going to do well for this universe. The story was awesome. This is the first Spider-Man film to ever take Spider-Man out of New York, out of the country actually. The whole movie is set in Prague, pretty much, and the Netherlands, foreign countries, away from America. I thought it was a pretty good idea to take Spider-Man out of the neighborhood, because to me, he's always been a friendly neighbor in Spider-Man, which that's fine. That's his tagline, that's his logo. But to me, for this film, it made Spider-Man more instead of just protecting the neighborhood. He was going on a larger scale, kind of like what the Avengers does. Maybe ex over-exaggerating a little, but hey. But Spider-Man in this, since he went to a different country and he was battling a really deadly foe, it just seemed like to me that they made the right choice for Spider-Man. And the way the, the betrayal for Spider-Man was in this, it just made him all the more interesting and stronger. Spoilers! This is set right after Endgame. So Peter Parker deals with the fact that Tony Stark is no longer around. And he deals with, you know, what can I do? Can I ever live up to this man's potential? He was like a father to me. And this and that. So there's a lot of emotions there. Which leads me to the characters. Tom Holland was born to play Spider-Man. Ever since Tobey Maguire hung up the spider suit... Back in 2007, they finally got it right again. I thought this was the best Spider-Man film since Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 3 was okay, but it was just overstuffed. The Amazing Spider-Mans, not so much. But Tom Holland, as soon as Marvel made a deal with Sony Pictures and they hired this guy to play Spider-Man, it was on. And he shows great emotions as Spider-Man, as Peter Parker. They could keep this guy playing Spider-Man, and I wouldn't mind seeing a 50-year-old Tom Holland play Spider-Man. I wouldn't care, because I think he would do great for many years to come, or as long as they decide to make these films. And you get Samuel Jackson back to play Nick Fury. He was good as usual. Zendaya plays MJ. I like this portrayal of MJ better. No disrespect to Kirsten Dunst. I still like her portrayal, but I've always thought of her as more of a damsel in distress because of the situation she was always put in in the Sam Raimi versions of Spider-Man. She was always a damsel in distress. I'm not saying that Zendaya could be put in that situation in the future, but it just seems like she was more focused, tough. She was a tough lady, and I really like that aspect. John Favreau, who I actually directed the first two Iron Mans, comes back as Happy Hogan. You know, he's been a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe since it started. And I thought some of the one-liners that he had in this film was pretty hilarious. I wish to see him in more comedies. I don't see him as much, in much comedies now for some reason. I think John Favreau could do a really good job in a comedy one of these days. Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio was fantastic. There was something I read where Tobey Maguire on the set of Spider-Man 2 got injured. And he was going to be replaced for Spider-Man 3 with Jake Gyllenhaal. But that never panned out. And Jake Gyllenhaal was a little sad about it at first. But after seeing Tobey Maguire's work and how much the character has grown to him, Gyllenhaal was like, no, nah, there's no other person to play Spider-Man other than Tobey Maguire at the time. But now that this film happened, I'm glad that they called Jake Gyllenhaal back. And I'm glad he got a part in it anyway. And he did a really good job. And on to my negatives, and this may be small potatoes to most, but I did, the whole second act, I didn't like that black suit. At first when I saw the trailers, I thought they were teasing Venom, but that wasn't the case at all. But I, I just felt like that was unnecessary. The regular spider suit did show up eventually, like in the first and the last act, but I just felt like that whole black suit era was just useless. I just didn't like that at all. Now, again, to most people, that might not be that big of a deal. But every time I saw him in that black suit, I just wasn't seeing Spider-Man. It wasn't Spider-Man to me. My final thoughts, this is the most fun I've had 
and a Spider-Man film in a long time. Even though Homecoming had its moments, it wasn't a perfect film. I felt like Far From Home definitely improved on that. I'm giving Spider-Man Far From Home an A-. minus. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. As usual, like, subscribe, get reputized, share, and like this video. It helps my channel. It helps my videos. I've said that many times. I know. What did you think of Spider-Man Far From Home? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Leave me that comment down below and give me your thoughts. Stay tuned for more videos and reviews coming soon to a computer screen or a cell phone near you. Peace the rip out.